Welcome to DaVinci by Alla Mode. I'm Joel Baker, your instructor. Today, we're going to show you how to draw this sketch in DaVinci. And we'll get to about 95% of the tools that you'll likely come across and use on a regular basis in DaVinci Desktop. We'll start off here with a blank sketch. Now at the top of DaVinci you have the three modes. There's Draw, Modify, and Pan. And you can at any point just click up on one of these buttons or use the hotkeys for them. And you'll use Pan to click on anywhere on the sketch and move the entire sketch. You'll choose Modify to click on an object, a piece of text, a uh, dimension, even uh, an area. You'll click on it, and then you can rotate it, move it, whatever you need to do there. We're going to start, however, with Draw Mode. I'm going to choose Draw, and then I'll just click somewhere in the drawing and get my pulsing button, which indicates that I'm actually drawing sort of like my pen is on the paper. Now, I'm going to draw a wall to the right for 15 feet. My keystrokes are 1, 5, and if you look down at the bottom, you'll notice it now says Length 15. I then hit the right arrow key and then hit enter to anchor the line. Now I'm going to draw a wall 9.8 feet down. 9.8 down arrow enter. Now if you're one of those folks that uses feet and inches you'll want to do feet tab inches. And I'll actually show you where in the program, if you'll hang tight, at the end of the video, you'll see where you can go into the preferences and actually make it display in feet and inches, if you like that. For now, though, I'm going to keep it in decimal feet, which is what most appraisers use. Let's do another 15-foot wall to the right. So 1, 5, right arrow, enter. And we'll go up 5 feet. So 5, up arrow, enter. We'll go across 10, 10, right arrow, enter. And now I'm going to go down 35 feet. So I type 35, down arrow, enter. Okay, I've zoomed in here so we can focus on angles. Don't worry, I'll come back and I'll show you how to zoom here in a little bit. In the field, there are two and only two ways to accurately measure an angled wall. The first way and the most commonly used method is rise and run. It's what most folks use to uh, measure a bay window, and that's what we're going to draw here is a bay window. So let's assume that I've gone out and I've measured uh, a three foot rise and a four foot run. So let's do three right arrow. Now I'm not going to hit the enter key just yet. I've done my rise, now I'm going to do my run. So do four down arrow. And you'll notice before I hit the enter key here that it actually shows me four feet and three feet. It actually shows me my rise and run and it also shows me the angles. Of course, unless your rise and run are exactly the same, then you're not going to get the 45 degree angle there that most people assume sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key, and I'll come down six feet. And you'll notice on your sketch as you draw these little circles, the red ones and the blue ones. They are called pop points, and you can use them all over your sketch to line up or square off your drawing. The blue one here indicates to me that this is the edge or, or mirror of my bay window here. Now, to use a pop point, if you're, you can, of course, take your mouse and just click on the point. But if you're using your keyboard, you hold down your control key and you hit a direction arrow. So from here, if I hold down my control key and I hit the left arrow, it pops me over. If I continue holding control and I hit the left arrow again, and then again, of course, it takes me straight to these other pop points. Again, helpful for squaring off, but I can, of course, square off my bay window this way. Hit the Enter key, then I'll go down 10 feet and hit Enter here. At any time, you can, of course, hit C to center your drawing, or you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out, which is what I'm doing right here. I can also pop over. Again, control, left arrow, left arrow, pops me over to that particular point, assuming that's the, uh, you know, where it is that I need to go to square it off. Let me just do another 15-foot wall here, 1-5, up arrow, enter. 
Okay, let's talk about the other way to accurately measure an angled wall in the field. The first was rise and run, which we covered just a moment ago, and the second is by measuring the uh, length of the wall itself and then the angle of incidence. And in this example, you'll notice on the outside, you can see in the, in the, in the corner there, is the angle of incidence appears to be 130 degrees. Now, sometimes when you're outside like this, you got to think just a little bit about high school geometry you've got to take into account the complementary angle. And what I've done here is I've just dragged my mouse over to a, about what it's going to be. I'm going to let's say I measured it as a 20-foot wall at, 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 at 130 degrees here. But what I really need to put in is 50 degrees, and here's why. I am going, you'll notice, in this direction, right? The, the last line that I drew was straight towards the top. So my real angle of incidence is not what I measured on the outside, but how far over I need to come this way. Okay, so if my angle of incidence on the outside is 130, I just subtract 130 from 180, and I come up with 50. And just a simple little arithmetic calculation, by the third or fourth time you do it, it'll just be second nature to you. Notice as I'm using the mouse, I can actually do either rise or run, as it shows it right here on the screen, or I can actually see uh, the angle of incidence and, of course, um, the length of the wall there at the top over by my pointer. For now, though, let me go back to my starting point, and I'm going to show you how to accurately input this information. So my keystrokes are going to be 2, 0. You'll notice it says length 20 down at the bottom. Then I am not going to hit my left arrow key. I'm going to tell it which direction, but I'm not going to do it with the left arrow key. I'm going to hit the L key. So 2, 0, L, and then I have to give it the angle of incidence. Remember, it was 50 degrees, so 5, 0, and then I hit Enter. Of course, if I have a wall and it's going to the right at a certain number of degrees, then I would hit the R key. But again, I'm using L or R. I'm not going to use the left or the right arrow keys for this. Let's go ahead and finish off our first floor here. I'm going to go 5, left arrow, enter. And then I'm going to pop up, control, up arrow, and start squaring it off. Now let me zoom out a little bit to show you what I'm doing here. So I've zoomed out a little bit, and now I'm going to pop over. Now I'm going to pop over, control, hit the right arrow twice, and hit enter, and then A, to auto close the area. Now Da Vinci tries to guess which type of area it is and generally it will get it right. You'll notice it tells me here that it says first floor. That's fine if it is, great. If not I can select another one and then hit enter. I'll go ahead and hit enter and it locks in my first floor. For this example we're going to do an attached garage that's inside. I've already drawn the perimeter of the property but I need to take out the garage, which is roughly in here. So let me go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is pop to a particular corner here. So I hover my mouse close to it and then hit the J key to jump to that particular corner. I then hit the Enter key to start drawing. I'll go down six feet, so six, down arrow, Enter. And I'll pop over and hit Enter. I remember popping is Control, right arrow. And then I'll pop up, control, up arrow. Now you'll notice all I had to do was draw those three walls. I do not have to draw the entire perimeter of the garage. When I hit enter for my last wall here, Da Vinci says, aha, is this a two-car attached garage? And notice it also selects for me right here, non-living area. It says this area will be cut out from original area from the first floor, which I've already drawn. If I'm okay with all of this, which I am for this example, I click OK. In fact, in Da Vinci, the disassociation is so um, complete that when I go to modify mode and select the garage, I can completely remove it away from the first floor area, completely. If I want, I can put it back too. 
Our next example includes a concrete patio outside the first floor that has also a curved segment here. And there's a couple of ways to do curves as well. One is to do it while you're drawing the curve, and the other is to do it after you've drawn the area and you come back and you draw, uh, change a line to a curve. I'll show you how to do both of those. I'll hover my mouse close to a corner, hit J to jump, and of course, enter to start drawing. I'll do 10, right arrow, enter, and now I'm at the point where I need to draw the curve, the arc. Now, for most folks, rise and run, laying your tape down on the ground works really well here. And I'm going to use this as an example of 10 and 10. So I'll do 10 down, 10 right arrow, just like we did a few minutes ago for angled walls on bay windows. But before I hit the Enter key, I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse. Just tick it up a little bit, tick, 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 until it looks about right. Get about here. And you'll notice as I do this that I get the arc height of about 3 feet and the arc length of 14.14. And some of you, of course, measure both of those. Some of you will measure, you know, 15.78 feet uh, around the outside. And there's no real good way to uh, take that and input 15.78 as far as the arc. So that's not really a good measurement to make. Again, you can measure the arc height and measure the, the arc length if you want to, but generally rise and run, and then just guessing that, that looks about right, and I hit the Enter key. I'll come down 12 feet and hit Enter, and I'll pop over. Again, Control, left arrow, left arrow, left arrow, and hit Enter. Of course, DaVinci guesses, hey, is this a concrete patio, non-living area? I agree with all this, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And there's my concrete patio. Notice again that I didn't have to draw the shared wall. That was there already. So let me go ahead and back up a moment. And this time I'm going to do rise and run again. 10, down arrow. 10, right arrow. But I'm not going to draw the arc. I'll come back and do that in a moment. And then I'll do 12 down. And again, pop over and hit enter. I can then come back in modify mode. I can click on the modify button and then click on the little blue point on this line and change after the fact the arc height, the angle here as well, arc height, and just guess. When I'm done I click out and you'll notice I still get the same thing but I've done this after the fact just clicking and dragging. In fact you can do this with basically any wall. This 10-foot wall here, if I want to, I can click on it in Modify Mode and make it a curved wall. Okay, we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to take the first floor and clone it as the second floor, and I'm going to do that on a second page. To do this, I'm going to start out in Modify Mode. I click Modify, then I click in the first floor, right-click and choose Copy Selected, and now I'm going to add a second page. Lower left corner, I click New Page, then I can right-click and choose Paste. Now you'll notice it says First Floor. That's because a copy of the first floor is the first floor, but I can modify that. I go to Modify Mode, double-click on the name of it for First Floor, choose Second Floor, and click OK. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is edit this area. We need to take off this side over here that's on the first floor that was copied from the first floor but not on the second floor and this is going to be a wall right here. So the first thing I need to do is go to modify mode, click on one of the walls and hit delete on the keyboard. This opens the area for editing. Notice I can click and drag in Modify Mode and select multiple items for deletion at a time. Let me delete this area. And I'll delete these other hangovers here. And now I'm going to draw the wall. So I go to Draw Mode, click on one of the corners, and I'm going to pop 
up, so I'll do control up arrow a few times, and hit enter. DaVinci asks, is this the second floor? All I have to do is hit enter or click OK. Let's do an open to below area, like a loft area right in here. I'll go to draw mode and click to start drawing. Let's do 10 down arrow enter and we'll go five right and I'll pop and when I hit enter to close it DaVinci asks is this an open to below area and it is notice that it also chooses subtract from living area and it's subtracting from the second floor if I agree click OK or hit enter if you don't like the fact for instance that open to below and the 50 square foot are right here you can go to modify mode and click on one or both of those items and move it away or you can right click on it and choose delete interior walls in DaVinci are very similar to exterior walls click the little tick mark next to draw and choose interior wall you can then click anywhere and start drawing your interior walls you can use your mouse like what I'm doing right here and you can also use pop points as well symbols and labels in DaVinci can be accessed from the pull down menus at the top or on the right hand side panel if you're missing the right hand side panel notice that you can click F9 on your keyboard and probably be able to turn that on let's go ahead and start with some symbols I'll choose a door we'll put some doors here on, on our interior walls click on the icon that I want and then click where I want it to go we do this with another door but before I click to drop it in place I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse to rotate it a little bit you can use the R key on your keyboard to do that if you want to and then click to place let's add in a corner fireplace get that about where I want it and click to place but let's say that corner fireplace isn't as big as I'd like I'm gonna go ahead and place it and then I can modify it I can go to modify mode click back on the icon or symbol and then click one of the corners to expand it or change the shape notice that I can do the same thing for some stairs in modify mode I click on the symbol to select it and then I can click the corners to reshape it and then click on the symbol and put it where I want it alright let's talk about labels click on labels and let's add a bedroom label I click on bedroom and then I click where I want it to go now if you're going to use bedroom multiple times in a row for instance you might try stamp mode at the top and that will allow you to just click several times on your sketch without having to go back and select bedroom individually each time that's what stamp mode is notice that you can also add a custom label as well to edit a label you click on it you can rotate it using the green pointer and of course you can click on it and move it To shade an area in DaVinci, you go to Modify Mode, and then click on the name of the area. Click Edit Area Properties, then choose your color in the top box. Click the box. I'm going to click Silver here and click OK. I'm going to bump the opacity to 100%, and notice down at the bottom, 
this is what it's going to be. When I'm done, I'm also going to choose a gradient. And click OK. Click OK again. Let's do this to the concrete patio. Click on the patio. Click Edit Area Properties. Click to choose a color. Bump the opacity to 100%. And I'll choose the same gradient. Click OK. And OK again. Now if you want your areas to automatically, your garage and your concrete patio to automatically have this shading, you hit F4 or set up area types. Choose concrete patio, edit area properties, and do what we just did and click OK. Of course you'll want to come down to your garage and do the same thing. Make your change and when you're done click OK. From time to time you may want to change some of DaVinci's default settings. You get to the settings through F5 on your keyboard. For instance, under the Draw tab, you can choose if you want your interior walls to be of a different color or of a different pattern. Say, for instance, dashes or dots. You can also resize your dimension labels. Notice how in DaVinci, by default, that some of your smaller walls have smaller dimension labels. That's so that they fit on the sketch better. If you don't like that, you can turn that off over here by unchecking Auto Resize Dimension Labels and clicking OK. That won't happen again. If you're in the sketch, you can click Edit, select all dimension labels, which selects all of them at the same time, and then just change the font size, changing them all at once. OK, uh, back in Preferences, let's take a look at a couple of the other more popular preference changes. Uh, the decimal precision. You'll notice on my concrete patio I had the 15.78 uh, feet curve there. If you'd rather have it say 15.8 or just 15 feet, you can change your decimal precision to 1 or 0 respectively. You can also make it display not in not with FT at the end, but also um, feet and inches with the uh, apostrophe and the double apostrophe, or in decimal feet.